asking or this inner need that we're starting to feel to connect and have more empathy and compassion for other people. And even a lot of wars have been stopped just by the distaste of the aggressor. Not nearly enough, but this is showing that something is emerging. There's some type of sacred reality, as uh, King Kerry would say, that's emerging into our realm. And I, I think little by little, people are picking up on it. But the trouble is, it's like entrainment. If you have a vibration that's far too low, and you have a really high vibration, it'll pass right through it. So you have to bring the low vibration up to a level to where it can entrain and catch on to that higher vibration. And this is the importance of spiritual practice, working on our consciousness, our meditations, and being here in this present moment and paying attention. Even as we speak right now, it's easy for me to sit here and get really caught up into what should I say and thinking of how to answer this instead of just being in the moment and applying that moment intelligence mm -hmm. to this moment of your questions. You understand what I mean? Yes, indeed, yes, yes. Uh, you might relate that perhaps to intuition, which is something that perhaps comes into your mind when you uh, are facing a situation which uh, often people ignore. <laughs> right. Yeah, and oftentimes, especially on an interview like this, the, the last thing you want is dead airtime. Air so I think uh, there's a propensity to get too well rehearsed and too well prepared, and it mm -hmm. sort of takes the life out of what you want to say. Yes. Now, when you mention about higher beings consciousness sort of uh, coming into our own, would you think that that is the reason why, or behind time speeding up? Yes, I, and again, we can use science as a, a little bit of a guideline here, because it does appear, you know, like with the Schumann resident, resonance, the earth is speeding up, particles are speeding up, and we're starting to learn so much about time and space. And uh, again, Fred Allen Wolf says, out there really isn't out there. And, and this is a, a new consciousness that's starting to come into our realm to where we're starting to see the world a little differently. Mm. Does that uh, relate somewhere to what I think you refer to as creation releasing energy? I mean, are, are we being bombarded by higher energy that will take us through a process of ascension anyway. Well, I think in the procession, we're starting to tilt back towards the center of our galaxy, and we are picking up new radiations that scientists have never picked up before. And I, I think sometimes when I'm trying to figure out something like this, I, I revert back to nature. And it's when you plant a seed in the springtime, there's a certain type of energy, a certain amount of energy coming from the sun, but as the seasons progress, the energy changes, and it's the right energy for the right time for that seed to blossom and show fruits. And I think we're at this point now in the procession of the equinox where we're starting to wake up. We're coming out of Kali. We're coming out of the dark age. And as we do this, we're going to notice more and more new energies coming into our realm, and it's going to cause different things that's going to be making us question our reality and questioning our consciousness. And in that transition, a lot of us might notice that we're getting more confused, our memory is getting a little more shaky, but if we can just hold on and follow this through and let it happen, because it has to happen, we can't make it happen. It either has to happen or not happen. And I think if we ride this, it's going to be the most interesting ride that we can imagine, and which is probably why people like you and I are here to see this thing through. Mm, absolutely, yes. Looking, <laughs> looking forward to it. Uh, how do you think people that have a strong religious belief, say in the apocalypse, can accommodate this new type of thought? Well, actually, one thing that would help is redefining the apocalypse, and also bringing to light the idea that the apocalypse is a prophecy. 
It's not a determined happening. A prophecy is any type of vision that you have based upon where you are and if you keep going in that direction, what will happen, which is actually just nothing more than common sense. But a prophecy does not have to happen. And that's something that the Bible makes very clear, but very few preachers bring out because, you know, everybody wants you to read believe in the apocalypse because that brings about fear. If you have fear, then they have the way out of fear where you can be saved. And it's like this giant organism that just sucks you in. And all you have to do is really read the Bible, and it clears a lot of this up. Somebody asked me, they said, what started you believing in Christianity? I said, well, I started to read the Bible. And they said, well, why aren't you a Christian now? I said, well, I finished. And once you finish reading the Bible, all things come clear, especially when you start in with Deuteronomy, Leviticus, and Exodus. You know, we're, we're talking about some pretty horrendous gods, if you ask me. Hmm. What do you think of the Bible as far as uh, supporting the idea of reincarnation? Well, um Jesus says that uh, you will be sent out into the world no more to be a pillar unto man. But again, a lot of these things were taken out were taken out of the Bible with uh, King James, especially. But even earlier, anything that smacked of reincarnation was methodically taken out of the Bible. But there's still a few things in there. Uh, even when Jesus is talking about he was Elijah before he was him, and um, I don't think it really supports reincarnation too much at this point because they don't want you to have the idea that you can come back and have another try at this. They want it all right here, right now, and this is what keeps the system going, especially with Christianity. Mm. Uh, I think the devil gets the blame for quite a lot of things, but from a personal point of view, do you believe there is such an entity uh, that could be described as a devil? Well, it's funny, what comes to mind is a saying by Nietzsche, he says, careful when you're throwing out the devil, least you throw out the best part of yourself. (laughs) I think we all have to recognize and embrace the fact that we do have a human nature that is has evolved out of survival upon um, separating us from them. But one of the things that's happening is that's starting to dissolve. Now, whether there's an entity behind that, there may be, but we have to, again, go back to the original writings of the Anunnaki, the Sumerian tablets, Mm -hmm. and we start seeing that Enki and Enlil, the two brothers, well, Enki and Enlil, one brother was good, one brother was bad. One brother saved Noah, one brother wanted to drown everybody. And these were the two first people that became Yahweh and Jehovah, and we started mistranslating them as gods and devils. So we we really have to really clarify the fact that the Bible is a misinterpretation of the original writings before we could even get close to talking about that. Yes. So it's sad in a way that there is this emphasis on the fact, as some religions claim, that the Bible is the word of God and they hold very fast to it right and um, that that just simply is not the way no and I I think uh, if people tend to believe that then perhaps there is fear within their minds if they uh, think of questioning what is in the Bible or what they are told that it means Yeah, and any time you take something literally that was written back in the Iron Age, uh, you know, especially in the 21st century, you can get into a lot of trouble. Yes. Now, logically thinking, I believe that when the ETs come, uh, they will come from an ascended uh, dimension. One would think that they will bring with them and let us know a lot of knowledge about the truth of our being and God and things like